Okay, welcome back. So here's about where we ended up in the last video. We have this bench now um, as one object. And I did go ahead and adjust the stripes. Whoop. There we go. <laughs> I did go ahead and adjust the stripes so that they are more or less uniform all the way across the seat on both ends. So everything should look pretty good. Now I did want to point out one thing um, because what we did to make this object here is to duplicate this one, we moved it over, we combined everything all into one object and then we rotated it around. Now I did want to show you going to hit A to deselect everything, B to border select this group of objects here, which is still uh, three objects. I did want to point out that um, if we want to rotate this around the Z axis and you notice how everything slides apart kind of like it did before, there are other ways uh, <clears throat> to go about spinning that around rather than joining them into one object. I wanted to join them as one object anyway, but I thought I would show you how to spin that around and keep everything together. Um, what you can do, if we select uh, the base here, we press Shift S, do cursor to selected, so now the cursor has moved right to the center of our base object there. Then if we change our pivot point down here to 3D cursor, then we select all of these objects again, and now when we rotate around the z-axis we're now all the objects are going to rotate around that 3d cursor so when we spin them around everything stays together um, I was still going to combine it into one object anyway so we would have spinned it around or spun it around <laughs> uh, then combined it so I just wanted to impress upon you that there's usually more than one way to do something and I don't know either way is fine the way I did it is just kind of the way I'm used to it. Okay, at any rate, we are done um, modeling uh, and cleaning up this object. Uh, so since we already have a, a copy of our original down on this layer, in our working layer now, I am going to uh, A to deselect everything, B to box select this group of objects, X delete, that's fine select this object now, shift D to duplicate it, uh, X to constrain the move to the X axis, move it around here, R to rotate around the Z axis, 180 degrees, and there we go. Alright, now we have our, our two seats um, set up in the scene. Let's go ahead and try to keep everything nice and neat. Uh, as far as naming our objects go. So what I'm going to do is if there was a character facing us, this object that is selected now would be on that character's right side. So I'm going to name this object uh, uh, we'll just call it uh, Booth <clears throat> Seat Right this object will name booth seat left. All right. Now back on our uh, layer with our our backup objects here. Uh, since we've duplicated things a couple of times, I'm just going to remove the extension 001. And I think that's probably, yeah, seat 001. And probably also on our stripes, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Just to kind of try to keep everything nice and neat. Uh, because here in the outliner, everything is going to show up. So I know that if I want to select the seat on the right, I can just click here. And if I select this, I know that uh, booth seat left is going to be correct here. And stripe, I know, is going to be on our, our 
backup layer here, just to kind of keep things kind of neat. Okay, enough said about that. All right, so what we want to do, um, let's turn this window back into a UV image editor. This will bring back the reference image that we were modeling from. Phone's ringing. Um, let me do something else that I forgot to do before I started the video. You know, making making these tutorial videos is kind of new for me, so I'm learning as I'm going too. Um, hopefully watching all my mistakes and missteps are going to be of some value um, to you, too, because you can... Um, I don't know. I think if you, uh, if I was to practice each one of these videos three or four times and get everything absolutely perfect, you'd never see some of the mistakes that you can make and how to how to go about fixing them. All right, we're going to turn this window back into a uh, the properties panel, and all I did there was I went ahead and uh, restarted the uh, screencast keys, so you can once again now see the keys that I'm pressing down here. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so on our first layer here, I'm going to select, uh, hit A twice to select everything in the scene. I'm going to hit Shift S, uh, cursor to selected, which will put the cursor right in the middle of those two objects. Um, our objects have their origin down at the base here, which is what we want. Um, I'll show you the reason why. Because if we were to decide that we want this seat a little bit bigger, and we hit S to scale it, it will scale... Well, we have our pivot point set to 3D cursor still. Let's put it to individual origins. Scale, it will scale up from the base, so we don't have to worry about repositioning it if it goes through the floor. If our origin was up here somewhere and we scaled it, it would scale below the floor, then we'd have to move it up. But at any rate, <clears throat> um, we've moved our 3D cursor right to the center of those objects. Even from a top view, you'll notice it's right in the center, which is where we want it. One thing to be careful for, uh, careful of, let me put the 3D cursor over here somewhere. If you're in front view, you can put the cursor right there and say, okay, great, it's right in the middle. But if you look at it from top, it's actually way out in front here. No big deal. You can always reposition your objects later on, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, look at the 3D cursor from multiple angles to make sure it's, it's where you want it to be. This is the point where any new objects are going to come into the scene. All right, so once again, from front orthographic view, we're going to add a new object to start modeling our table. Uh, so let's shift D, uh, duplicate, sorry, control Z to undo. Okay, uh, shift A, and we are going to add, um, let's start with the, uh, with the, post that the table sits on. So we'll go ahead and add a cylinder. <clears throat> now over here on the left side uh, there are some options that we can adjust. Uh, 32 vertices is quite a lot I think for for this because it's going to be fairly small and not going to have a lot of detail. Uh, so let's, uh, I don't know, something... Can we get away with 8? Yeah, probably, um, because I think we're going to put a subsurf modifier on this, so 8 should be fine. One thing to keep in mind, um, you can move all these around and, and make all kinds of adjustments, but as soon as you do something out here in the 3D view, all those options disappear. Um, so we have 8 vertices now, and if we wanted to change that, uh, we could, but we'd have to do it manually. Um, so just keep that in mind. As soon as you do something to the object, you scale it, move it um, out in the 3D view, all of your options here go away for editing it. So let's delete that object. We'll shift A, add a mesh uh, cylinder back in. Okay, it comes back in with eight vertices just like we left it. Let's move the radius on down to something that looks... <clears throat> I don't know, just from looking at it, I'd say that looks about right. Oops. Um, yeah, that's a little small. That's, that's a little big, so let's go 1.5. Whoops. 
1.5. No. 1.5 inches. As I am still in the imperial system. Um, but if you're using the metric system, just adjust it so it looks about right in your scene. Uh, 1.5 inches, uh, I don't know, that, that looks to be about the right size to me. We can always adjust it later on if we need to. Um, let's go into edit mode now. Um, well, hold on a second. Yeah, okay. We'll go into edit mode, grab the Z handle, and I'm going to hold down uh, control as I drag this up so it snaps to the grid so we snap it right to the floor <coughs> excuse me so the origin point of this object now uh, is on the floor so if we try to scale it it'll it'll be the same as these it won't go below the floor okay um, in object mode let's go ahead and give it smooth shading just so it looks a little bit nicer that may be still a little big but that's all right. Okay. Um, looks about the right height. We can play with that later on too. Okay. Anyway, um, now in edit mode, I am going to hit A to deselect everything. Uh, let me pick one of these vertices, numpad period, to center on it and zoom in a little bit. If I alt right click, it will select this whole top edge loop here. Notice we haven't selected anything on the bottom. And I'm going to hit uh, Shift S, cursor to selected, Shift A, and we're going to add this time a mesh uh, cube. So that the origin of the cube will be right at the 3D cursor there. And this is going to end up being our tabletop. So let's uh, scale this down in Z until uh, it's about the thickness that we want our table. I think something something along those lines will be just fine. Let's look at it from the top. So we'll hit numpad 7 to go into top view. And scale it this time in the Y direction. And we'll scale it out so it's maybe not quite as wide as the, as the seats there. And um, we want it to overlap the seats just a little bit, I think, on top. So let's scale it a little bit in the X direction, just so it, uh, yeah, probably something like that. <coughs> okay. Looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah, something like that looks pretty good. <coughs> mm, I need a glass of water. Um, hold on one second, I will be right back. Okay, that's a little bit better. Alright, so we have the top of the table, uh, basically. We have the uh, pedestal, which uh, I think it looks a little bit, a little bit big to me, so let's see, we'll hit A to deselect our top piece there. I'm going to hit L over one of the vertices on our pedestal, and that'll select everything that's linked to it. Now I want to I want to keep it just as tall, but I want to thin it out a little bit. Um, so what we can do is uh, hit S to scale, and then uh, Shift Z, which will scale it in X and Y, but not Z. So scale that in just a little bit. How's that look? <clears throat> that looks more like it. I wonder. Let me see if we can do something else here. Uh, let me see. Whoop. Okay. Nope. Alright, well, anyway, I was just playing there for a second. <laughs> Okay, so we have our uh, tabletop basically constructed. We have the pedestal here. Now we need to put uh, these feet on the bottom. <clears throat> A couple ways we can go about doing that. But I think what we'll do, see A to deselect everything, uh, Control R, 
to put a loop cut across here and we'll slide it down to <clears throat> somewhere around there. Okay. Let's see. I am going to, while we're modeling this, I'm going to go back into object mode. I'm going to hit M to move this object and I'm going to move it over one layer. So this will be uh, the layer where all our completed objects go, but to work on it so nothing else gets in our way, I'm going to put it on a layer all of its own. Okay, so back into edit mode. Uh, how are we going to bring those, those feet out from here? Let's see. Um, <clears throat> two that way, two that way. Okay, let me think about this for a second here. Okay. Let's, let's try this. Uh, control tab, let's go into face mode. I'm going to select this face. All right. Um, <clears throat> See what happens if we hit E to extrude. I'll pull that out. Uh, I don't know about that far. All right. <clears throat> so now we want to select the one exactly opposite that, which would be that one. <clears throat> okay, we're going to uh, hit E to extrude that one, and we'll bring it out about the same distance. Uh, okay, then we want to do that one. Um, e to extrude. Bring it out about there. And the one opposite it, this one. E to extrude. Uh, bring it out about there. The, these can all be adjusted a little bit once we get done, but let's see. Uh, if we look at it from here. <clears throat> So it would be nice if uh, these pointed directly to the corners. Um, so let's hit L to select everything that is linked uh, on the pedestal here. <clears throat> I'm going to hit uh, R to rotate around the Z axis. And we're just going to turn that whole thing. Let's see. I guess... I don't know. I think about right there looks <clears throat> looks right to me. So if we're looking at it from the front, it looks like it's more or less in the same orientation. Okay, <clears throat> looks pretty good. Uh, that face there. Uh, let's see. If we hit seven, we can go in the top view. If we hit, uh, whoops. Control 7, uh, it'll bring us into bottom view. <clears throat> so I want to make this foot here a little longer. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Need another drink of water. But if I grab these handles, it's going to move along the global axes, either X, Y, or um, I can grab it in the Z axis here. So that's not going to help us out too much. Um, if I hit G to grab, I can probably pull it pretty straight out. Um, but there's a chance that I'd get it off. Um, probably doesn't matter too much for, for this project, but let's take a look at this down here. Um, our transformation orientation, instead of global, what if we switch that to local? No, nope, that doesn't change. How about normal? Okay, if we switch it to normal... <clears throat> Our manipulator has now switched, so it's going to be pulling that face in the direction that the normal faces. Um, haven't really talked about normals yet, but think of a normal basically as uh, which way the face is facing. Um, so this face is facing this way, so that works for us. Uh, we can grab this handle here and just pull it out a little bit. Uh, let's see, can we get... nope. 
that one. Uh, pull that out just a little bit, like so. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, we can we can measure and get them exact, but <clears throat> I don't think it matters too much. I just want them to look about right. Okay, so keep in mind that your transformation orientation down here um, can sometimes help you out. Uh, so keep in mind that that is an option. Okay. Um, while I'm thinking about it, let's go into object mode. We'll go over here to our um, object tab, and we'll name this table. Okay. Now, this table, uh, you'll notice the edges are rounded off, and the feet here are not, you know, perfectly square like this. So, um, I think we're going to add a subsurf modifier to this to uh, to help us get that shape a little bit better. So, let's go to our modifiers tab, and we'll add a subdivision surface modifier. We'll put the views up to two, and oh, that's a pretty cool looking table there. <laughs> um, but let's see, go back in edit mode, um, control tab to go back in the vertex select, and we need to kind of re reshape our object here. Our original mesh is here, but uh, the object the subdivision surface modifier is giving us uh, below the mesh <clears throat> needs a little bit more information from our, our mesh so we can get the right shape. Um, yeah, let's do it the way we did the other object too. So, uh, Control R, um, loop cut, and we'll slide it out to sharpen up that edge. Uh, Control R, another loop cut, uh, slide it out there, like so. Left click, another loop cut, slide it over here. Left click, another one. Slide it out there, lock that in place. <clears throat> okay. Now, we want a sharper, we don't want this to round around like this. We want this to be kind of a sharp edge, so we'll put a loop cut here, drag it up, and we'll do another loop cut and bring it down. Okay. Okay, I forgot that we were trying to round off these corners. See, this is what happens. <laughs> Alright, so Alt, whoops, A to deselect everything, Alt right click, okay that is what I want. So I was just making sure that that, that selection, we, we want this uh, this loop cut here. So we can either hit uh, Control E and go to um, Edge Slide. That puts us in Edge Slide mode, and we can move that back down, right, like so. Or uh, we want to do this one as well. Let's hit A to deselect everything. Alt, right click that one. You can double tap G, 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 and we'll move that down like so. All right, so that kind of rounds off that corner. Um, so we'll need to do that uh, with this one. Alt, right click, GG, move it in like so. This one, alt, right click, GG, move it down. Okay, so now our table has those rounded corners that we wanted. Um, the top and bottom are sufficiently squared off for the time being, I think. Uh, let's see. Are we in smooth? Yeah, okay, smooth shading. Uh, so let's work on our pedestal. Uh, control R, we'll put a loop cut there. Just move it all the way up as the top. We're going to delete the top face on this when we clean the object and adjust that a little bit anyway. Um, <clears throat> control R, another loop cut, and bring that down to sharpen up the bottom. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me do a loop cut here and see what this does. Okay, because we want that to be nice and flat.
flat on the bottom. But you know, I think I kind of like uh, I kind of like that look on the top there. Let's go back in the object mode. Um, I don't know. I think our feet need to be a little bit, uh, they need to stick out a little bit more, but um, I guess we could flatten them down some, but I don't know. For, for now, I'm going to leave it like that. I kind of like that look. Not too bad, huh? Yeah, I like that. All right. Let's do this. Uh, control 7. So we'll go into bottom view. Um, I am going to go into face mode. I'm going to select, let me get my 3D cursor out of the way. I'm going to select that bottom face. Uh, Shift S cursor to selected now. Now I'm going to select, let's see, that face. Uh, Shift select that one. That one in that one. <clears throat> Let's go back in the bottom view with control 7. Uh, now I'm going to switch my uh, pivot point to 3D cursor and let's see what happens if we scale. Okay, because now it's scaling. Okay, but it's Okay, I want to uh, scale uh, Shift Z, so we only go on X and Y. Move those out a little bit. That looked a little small to me. Okay, A to deselect everything. Um, <laughs> now, now you can really tell that uh, these are not quite all the same size. Uh, that one, whoops, that one, that one. Let's uh, put our pivot point back to individual origins. We'll switch to, uh, uh, whoops, switch our manipulator to uh, normal. And uh, pull this one out here, about like so. Uh, this one may be a little too long, I think. So let's pull that one back. Something there doesn't look right. get too crazy with these. Um, i turn off proportional editing. Um, <clears throat> you can literally fiddle around with, with little adjustments uh, like this for hours upon hours. Um, I probably should have uh, selected all those faces, put the 3D cursor in the middle, and extruded them from the 3D cursor so they'd all be the same length to begin with. But anyway. Alright. So... Um, here's our basic table. All right. Uh, so here we have a basic table. Let's uh, shift select our first layer here, so we can see how we're looking. Um, I don't know. I think that looks pretty good. Um, Table might be. Let's see. Move our bench seat. Move our seats it. Move our seat in just a little bit like so. Um, I think so far so good. I think that looks pretty good uh, so far. Um, we can, if we like. Uh, assign some materials to this object, uh, just temporary placeholders, just so we have something uh, to look at for the time being. And um, as you've probably figured out from this object, you can have more than one material on each object. So let's go back into edit mode. Uh, I'm going to hover my mouse over 
uh, one of these faces, hit L to select all of that. Now this has kind of a black material. Uh, it's a little shiny, but we'll go to um, our material tab here and um, we'll make a new material. And this one we'll just make pretty dark. Uh, yeah, I don't think we don't need to play with the materials right now. Um, but with the bottom selected, um, although I don't think we really have to, because um, it's automatically applied to the whole object, I'm just going to hit assign. So it's assigned to that bottom piece. For the top here, let's uh, hit A to deselect everything. I'll hover over a face, hit L to select the top. Um, let's name this material where we're thinking about it. We'll call this. Uh, table uh, base. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, so that's our table base material. Let's um, put a new material slot on our table object. And with this other slot selected, we'll hit new. And that, uh, we'll just leave that kind of white. Um, because we, we're going to make probably actually three materials for this object when we get to that point. One for this shiny silver uh, band around the side. We'll do a nice uh, old-fashioned Formica top and we'll have a metal material for the base here. For, for the time being though, let's do the base this kind of light gray and the top we'll leave white. So this material, this material selected, uh, the top face is selected, let's hit assign. Go back in the object mode, and now you can see we have um, a white-ish top and uh, our black uh, base there for for the table. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking. I kind of like the way that that base looks. Uh, it's not exactly like our reference image there, but um, let's see. Maybe we need to sharpen that up just a hair, though. Um, Let's go back in the vertex mode. Uh, control R, put a loop cut there. Uh, control R, bring that in. Okay. That look a little. Yeah, that looks a little, a little bit better, I think. Okay. All right. So we have. Um, the basic table uh, completed. The next step, I think, what I want to do in this object is to um, build out the room that these objects are going to sit in so we can get kind of a uh, idea how everything is going to come together. So in the next video, we will uh, build out our room and we'll have a window. Uh, and uh, yeah, things really should start moving along from there. Alright, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.